In case you haven't heard, both Hallmark and Lifetime cable channels will begin airing new Christmas movies this coming weekend. Lifetime on the 23rd and Hallmark the very next day. Yes, you heard me right. A full week before Halloween, we can watch the snowball fights, gingerbread house and Christmas cookie competitions, the inevitable love triangle tension. Don't you always feel bad for the jilted guy, even when he's a jerk, and he usually is. And the even more inevitable kiss in the falling snow as the credits begin to roll. More than a few folk have mentioned to me that Wally World has had both Halloween and Christmas items out since late August, early September. The large drugstore chains were not far behind. Cultural observers in general, and theologians and religious observers in particular, have long bemoaned the this collapsing of the hallowed set apart days and weeks from fall to winter into one unending holiday. I believe Dean L. Gregory Jones of Duke Divinity School once described it as Hallow Thanks Christmas, or something close to that. The primary complaint seems to be that in merging these feasts and celebrations into one long continuum, we lose the core focus and significance of all of them. And, truth be told, we do seem to be getting sloppier and sloppier in our proper observance of these hallowed days and weeks. Don't get me started on Advent and that prayer and fasting and almsgiving we don't do during that preparatory season. But wait a minute. We need to also remember that for all the ages prior to electricity and refrigeration, it was normal for folk in the northern temperate and polar zones to shut down in the late fall and only emerge again in the late winter, early spring. You know, Groundhog Day. During that season, families, clans, and communities would spend the days in very long and dark nights consuming all of their livestock but for a few breeding pairs. They could not feed a large herd through the winter with the sometimes meager harvest and limited storage capacity. And since it was possible to salt cure and store only a limited amount of meat, the period between late fall and early spring was one of near perpetual feasting, so the meat would not go to waste. And you think you put on a few pounds during the winter. Add in the glow of candles and hearth fire against the late year darkness, and you had a movable feast, festivals, from autumn harvest to spring planting and birthing. This has been the norm rather than the exception for most of human history. This is the year of COVID-19. This year there will be no downtown merchants, trick or treat galas or harvest festival for those who want to pretend it's anything other than a Halloween event, or open air trunk or treat events in church parking lots, except for the most defiant and reckless of congregations, or Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade or Christmas parades and pageants. So perhaps this is the year where we, who are so blessed and privileged, hunker down like the ancients in our warm and reasonably cozy abodes with those we are closest with. We light the candles, leave treats out for the neighborhood ghosts and goblins in that ancient tradition of misrule, of misrule and acknowledgement of the thin veil between life and death. In late November, set the table, light the candles, and thank God for the cornucopia before us, after we have dropped off bags of non-perishables for those whose harvest has not been so bountiful. In December, light the candles, decorate the tree and door, and thank God for the ultimate gift of God's Son born in humbleness to redeem all of creation after we have dropped off our leaf bag full of gifts for children who Santa would never find. And so on and so forth, through Epiphany, on to Candlemas, Groundhog Day. We can move through the continuum while retaining the eternal significance of each if we're intentional and disciplined enough to do so. This year of forced hibernation is the perfect year to do so.